Okay, welcome back. Ian, talking about how to install Quantum GIS. Now, last time we got to the point where we downloaded this setup file here. Now, future releases are going to have numbers other than what you're seeing here. The important thing is, though, that it is the setup file. And let's double click on it and we'll start the setup program. So click, click, off we go. We can expect this to have a bit of a think. It's going to be having a look at your system and then it's going to load. Now, this probably takes a minute or so on my system, which is running Windows 7. Okay, here we are. My computer has recognized the setup file. It's not a Microsoft file. So it's saying, do you really want to run this? Well, we're going to trust it because we've downloaded it from the Quantum GIS site. So just go yes and the setup screen will appear. Here we go. Now this screen is just saying that ideally you should close all other applications that you might have running. Now this is a pretty wise thing to do um, so I advise you to do it. Obviously um, I'm running recording software to record this video, so I'm going to have to keep that going. But I've closed just about everything else that I've got open. Okay, so we click the next button, and here we go. Now, what you're presented with is a license agreement. Now, you're absolutely entitled not to accept this license agreement if you don't want to. The problem is that if you don't accept it, the program won't install. So in actual fact, you're just going to have to accept it to continue with the installation. I suppose as with any legal agreement, you're advised at least to flick through this. So click on the I agree button and you're taken to this dialogue here. It's had a bit of a look at your system and it's saying, first of all, that it's going to require 862 megabytes of space and I've got um, 1367 gigabytes of space. So I've got heaps of room for this. So unless you've got a really, really good reason to change the destination folder, please just take the default. It is going to make it so much easier for people to help you um, if you've got installation problems, if, if you've kept these, uh, this default folder. But look, you know, you shouldn't have any problems. It should install just fine. I've installed it on a number of different computers and I've never had a problem. Okay, so click the next button and you'll be presented with the option to install some sample data sets. Now, if you want to install these, go ahead and install them but you don't need to because these lessons are based on data that I'm going to be providing you with. Okay, so leave these unchecked and just click the install button and off we go. Now, you can imagine from what we're seeing that this is going to take a little while, so I'm going to pause this video for a moment. Okay, here we are. We're almost installed. This has been about eight minutes that I've had this paused for. We're now installing Visual C and we'll go through this installation process. Don't be surprised when this happens. Uh, if any option comes up to cancel it, please don't cancel it because it will part be parts of the system that don't run if you do. Okay, so here's the final screen. Uh, the installation is now complete and we should be finished. I'm just going to pause this for a while while I find an icon, but first I'll click the finish button. So here we are back on my desktop. What you see are two new icons. The one we're interested in is called Quantum Gist Desktop. And as I've said before, there will be future releases of Quantum Gist, so don't expect the numbers to stay the same, and perhaps even the symbol might be different, but the installation procedure I've just shown you will undoubtedly remain the same for versions in the near future. So if I was to double click on this QGIS desktop icon, what you would see is Quantum GIS launch. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. Bye for now.